And what is up YouTube? Today I want to share my first impressions of the Ultra Lone Peak 8. If I'm not mistaken, this is like the 12th version of the Lone Peak. They used to have like half versions come out every couple of years and they kind of cut that since version five. So I've had the five, the six, the seven, and now the eight, but they've also had various other versions like the all weather or other water resistant versions in the past. They have hiking boots, they have like urban walking shoes. So I've kind of lost count how many kind of versions there are, but don't let the name fool you. And I hate it when other YouTubers say that this is the eighth version cause it's not. But then again, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, Lone Peak 8, they sent this pair to me for testing and review. So far I've only done about 20 kilometers in them, so this is really not a full review. This is simply a first impressions because I do know that some people do enjoy watching those. And hell, I like making them. When I saw images of them a few months ago, I was kind of surprised because I didn't see that much change compared to the predecessor. On the one hand, I'm happy about that because I did like the 7 compared to the 5 and the 6. And now it really just feels like they're releasing a new version just for the hell of it. But there are a few minor tweaks weeks to the eight that I'd like to kind of share with you in this video. Overall it's the same shoe, 25 millimeter stack height, ego midsole, max track outsole. There's a rock plate inside protecting your feet from anything sharp that you may be stepping on in the trails. I do have the seven right here for comparison. I will try to make some close-ups later. Looking at the toe bumper, they are starting to use less protection around the toe cap. Just like the seven, it's still very soft. So if you were to kick anything in the trails that will hurt your feet. Another minor detail I like about these shoes let me just make a close up so you can see there are some small holes right here because I complained in the past I'm not such a big fan of eyelets like this the way they are laced right now I think this is called like a webbed eyelet I'm not very happy with that the other reason why I know they have things like this is that there's less pressure of the lace on the top of your foot but somebody also once told me that there's also more friction i'm personally not a fan of that because uh, i have a hard time tying and untying my shoes because of that so on this side i've actually now decided to i'm gonna just gonna use those extra holes so they've punctured two holes in those webbed eyelets you can see around here and i'm just gonna see if there's actually any noticeable difference one thing that i am expecting is that it's going to be easier to tie and untie anyway that's just a small minor detail there really is not much difference between the seven at least in europe they've lowered the price by 10 euros which i think is pretty awesome so just under 50 euros right now which i think is a really decent price for a trail running shoe another slight improvement compared to the seven is the pull tab it is like a few millimeters bigger so it's just very easy to stick your finger through and pull them on same goes for the pull tab up here on the tongue it's a soft material and easy to pull the tongue up it are really just the details in the shoe that they've changed also a slight change they've added a little bit more material off the velcro back here you need to wear a gaiter in the trails really just a few millimeters not much the upper material feels very similar to the previous version maybe slightly tougher hopefully with improved durability because i do know that alto has been suffering with durability in the past few years i found that they were really comfortable straight from the box not all altos are comfortable i think straight from the box and particularly the Timp and the Olympus in the past, I always found I need a few kilometers to actually get the shoe kind of like broken into. I think that Lone Peak feel amazing straight from the box. And I went for a really muddy run the other day and I did find that the Max Track is actually doing a really good job with the grip. I know that the Max Track doesn't have a good track record in the past uh, when it comes to grip, especially on like wet and stick surfaces. But when I went out in the mud, I, the traction was really good. I didn't notice slipping that often as I did in the past. It could be because they're brand new, no idea. I'm gonna keep an eye on that, but grip is feeling good. Another very minor detail. So the holes right there, there, they are slightly smaller compared to the seven. These holes are slightly bigger. I do notice that quite some mud gets into my shoes when I'm running in the long peaks and I did not have that problem the other day. So now I'm curious, is it because these holes are slightly smaller? I don't know. Maybe it's because of the upper. I don't know. If you've been following my channel for a little bit longer, you know that the Lone Peak is not my favorite trail running shoe out there. The Lone Peak has been like a fan favorite for years. I think in Europe, the Olympus is slightly more popular and I honestly don't have too much trust in the Ego midsole really lasting that long. In previous versions, I would always feel that the midsole would kind of feel flat after like 250 kilometers. Not something that I've noticed with the seven so far. And with the eights, I would just have to see how far they come. You can really twist them quite well despite the work plate inside nice and bendy 
really comfortable shoe, comfortable tongue, a little bit of support in the heel cuff, but not too crazy. When it comes to foot shape, the low peak still comes in the so-called original foot shape, which is the widest, or at least the toe box is the widest compared to other altos out there. I don't have particularly wide feet, so I don't really need that extra space. I do like it that my feet get displayed out and have plenty of wiggle room. However, I do notice that running downhill, it just gets a little bit sloppy for me. I lose a lot of trust in the shoes when I'm running fast downhill, so they are not the pair of shoes where I like racing in. But I think for an easy trail run, 10, 20, maybe even 30 kilometers, they are great. But if you really want to run fast in them, at least for me, it gets a little bit too sloppy. And then I would prefer to go for something with a little bit more of a narrow fit. So as I said, first impressions, I like them. They're comfortable. I will be running in them for the next few months. I do know that the Tim 5 is coming out shortly as well as the Mont Blanc Carbon. So another two trail shoes that I also want to test out. So it's going to be tough getting actual kilometers in them. I will just have to see which ones I prefer to run in. How about you guys? Have you already tried the Low Peak 8? Do you have any questions about them or any other ultra shoe out there? How about you leave a comment down below, subscribe, leave a like, whatever you want. Thank you guys for watching. And see you guys next time. Bye.